Gamers on Games is sponsored in part by... Hi, this is Dennis with 3D Game Gear. We are gamers with a family-run business that specialize in 3D printed accessories for board games. We offer a wide range of items, including tokens, token cups, token boxes, player dashboards, and much more. We are always adding new items to enhance your gaming experience, so come check us out at the address below. Hey guys, it's Dave for Gamers on Games, and at Rich's prompting, I'm wading into the public mosh pit of opinion that is the Star Wars fan base when it comes to Star Wars The Last Jedi. Let me start off by saying that I didn't hate this movie, nor did it leave me completely fanboying over it. It managed to leave me somewhere in the middle. From here on, there will be spoilers, so I'll give you a moment to turn this off if you want to avoid spoilers. Alright, if you're still here, my assumption is that you've already seen it, or you don't care about spoilers. I'm going to go through this as linearly as possible, and try and make sure I don't miss much, but things may slip through the cracks, so I'm open to debating and continuing this conversation in the comments section. So, the movie opens with the Resistance evacuating their base, as the First Order closes in to crush them, presumably once and for all. For those of you playing the home game, we did just stumble into the beginning of Empire Strikes Back, particularly Hoth. Now this won't be the last time that we visit Hoth throwbacks, but we'll get to that when the time comes. So we get almost immediately into the thick of it. Poe Dameron's run on the First Order Dreadnought is probably the highlight of the first few minutes of the movie. I enjoyed this on a number of levels, though when he pulls the 180, I did lean over to my wife and remark, I hate that your fighters can do that, referring to the special turn maneuver that Poe's uh, X-Wing can do in X-Wing miniatures. She responded with, I love that my miniatures can do that. Outrunning the First Order. Alright, let's get a few basic physics points out of the way. Constant thrust does not equal constant speed, it means constant acceleration. That being said, the resistance wouldn't have burned through so much fuel if they had shut off the engines once they were outrunning the First Order. Now, if the First Order is still accelerating, then yes, the resistance would also have to keep accelerating to stay ahead, and as one officer said, they were outrunning them because they are lighter and faster, which would make sense considering First Order ships have higher mass and would require more energy to accelerate. So there, we address that point. Leia in space. Alright, let's address the elephant in the room. Leia, the Force, and Deep Space. Now, we all know she's Force sensitive. You get the first hint of it when Luke calls out to Leia to rescue him when he's hanging off the weather vane at the end of Empire Strikes Back. So her using the Force to some degree isn't exactly the issue. But the ability to preserve herself in space, move through it, then break down doors, feels like it could have used a throwaway line about how Luke teaching her some things or learning things from Kylo Ren slash Ben Solo. Something like that feels like it would have helped to explain this. Otherwise, it sort of feels like it comes out of left field. With the realization that this is the last time we'll get to see Carrie Fisher playing Leia, it feels like let her do what she wants is appropriate. But if she hadn't passed, would we still be so cavalier in accepting it? When you saw her flying through space, did anyone else get the I'm Mary frickin' Poppins, y'all kind of feeling going on? Or was that just me? On a final note, Plo Koon pulls the unprotected spacewalk in an episode of Clone Wars, so this has been established as a thing, at least to me. I chalked up part of his spacewalk to his cybernetic augmentation, though. Vice Admiral Holdo, Poe, The Plan, and Mutiny. Alright, so Holdo is holding, I'll let you enjoy that pun for a moment, holding the big master plan secret from the rest of the surviving resistance members. And this winds up leading directly to a mutiny. Seriously, the pressure of losing ships, being low on fuel, and the dogged pursuit of the First Order, it all culminates in a Poe-led mutiny. Quick note, when he and others pull out their blasters and hold Hodo and her staff at gunpoint, why does no one else seem to notice, care, or interfere? A mutiny at a time like this would likely result in a swift factioning and all-out chaos. 
but it genuinely seems like all the extras in the background are either oblivious or just have no opinion. Kind of weird for a movement so heavily based on feelings of duty, justice, vengeance, and freedom. Alright, with that out of the way, why doesn't she just divulge the plan? Is there concerns that the more people who know that Snoke or Kylo will like be able to sense it or read their minds? I genuinely can only come up with this as a reason. If there was a seed for, they tracked us through hyperspace because of a beacon on board, maybe a traitor angle could have been worked which would have made this fit better, but we don't get that seed. So the secrecy just doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. Canto Bite The casino scene feels useless in that it doesn't actually resolve anything, but works as a mechanism for Finn's perspective change. It seems in a way that it's supposed to be the equivalent of Bespin or the Cantina, again from Empire Strikes Back or New Hope respectively, but subverts this when the Codebreaker doesn't come on board with the Resistance, or if you prefer with Finn and Rose. This would be inverted from Lando's character arc of being out for himself slash being out for Bespin gas mining and then joining up with the Rebels to save Han. Of course, that was after the deal kept getting worse all the time. The Cantabite scene in its entirety really felt like a swipe at real life political issues and movies of course have the right to use their creative license to shine a light on real world issues and it seemed to me like this was another example of that. Another reason that I got the Codebreaker is the new Lando feel was raised and quickly dashed when the ATST or whatever its upgraded equivalent is started shooting and you get the feeling like that oh he's chosen the resistance and instead you find out it was BB-8 all along and by the way BB-8 having a body count is a little weird. I can't say I can recall R2-D2 uh, actually managing to direct kills unless that's something I'm forgetting. Yoda. The appearance of Yoda especially as a puppet was interesting. Yoda here does what Yoda has always done best, spout exposition and pseudo-philosophy. The fact that Yoda not only assures Luke that the time of the Jedi is over and that the books aren't all that relevant anymore, the fact that he makes the decision and makes the action that Luke hesitates to go through with against, again shows how far Luke has to go. Let's also keep in mind that Luke shut himself off from the Force for an extended period. This also makes his final scene that much more interesting. Remember, he does state early on that he went to the island to die. He ends as a hermit much the same as Obi-Wan and Yoda had done. Overall, the killing of the original characters isn't just a practical decision. The actors are getting up there in years, but it's time for the series to move to a readily accessible position for a younger and fresher audience. Though I personally am getting the feeling a bit like I'm watching Transformers the movie again, watching characters I grew up with biting the dust just to make room for new ones. But again, that's just me. So overall, this has been a quick kind of overview of my point of view regarding Star Wars The Last Jedi. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, let's continue the conversation down in the comment section, and I will happily discuss things in my perspective with you there. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next time. Just a reminder that everything you see here on Gamers on Games is made possible by patrons like you. Why not check out our Patreon page? It would really help us out.